Well, Elgato's finally launched Wavelink 2.0. And when I say finally, it's because the original Wavelink, which is their mixing software that ships with all their audio products like the Wave Mic, the Wave XLR, originally launched back in 2020. And until today, it's, it's mostly looked the same. So today's a good day. We got a complete overhaul of the system, still the same simplicity and ease of use that it's become known for. And one uh, kind of game breaking feature that gave me a wow moment. So let's just jump into it. There is a reason I'm able to make regular videos like this, by the way, and that's because of really great sponsors like Owned.Pro, which is the fastest and easiest way to set up your live stream, whether it's Twitch or YouTube or wherever you wanna go live or all the places. That's fine too. With Own.Pro, you have access to over 10,000 design elements that you can completely customize to create your own stream style, no matter how unique you want your stream to look. You can even customize the color of their pre-made designs to match your branding. Setup is super fast and easy, and you can create a complete stream package in seconds with alerts, widgets, and labels added automatically. Upload your own assets, access their massive widget library, create elements from scratch. Owned.pro is an easy and fast way to get started streaming. Link to them in the description down below. Go sign up. Make your stream look pretty. Let's get back into Wavelink 2.0. So as you can see, there's been a little bit of a redesign. You can now see which apps are going into which audio channels. You now have a mute button built right into the software. Thank goodness. And you have a little bit of touch ups to the icons, but for the most part, a mostly subtle design change here. So let's jump into all the new features that they added because there's a pretty good list and I've ordered them so that each one is a little bit more exciting than the one before it's obviously for view retention. <laughs> I want you to stick around to the end because the last one, okay, I sound like Buzzfeed, but the last one is pretty wild. But let's jump right in and just start banging these out. First thing, single click audio routing. What this means is remember before, if you had like a new app or a new game and you wanted to send it to a specific channel, you had to go into the sound settings and then you had to scroll down and then you had to click on volume mixer. Then you had to find the app that you wanted to adjust and then change the output right there. Yeah. Never do that again. Look at this. I don't know why you'd use Microsoft Edge, but if you did, that's how you would add it to a channel. I don't know why it's called one click. That was two clicks. A Little bit of false advertising there, Elgato, but two clicks is still pretty good, so we forgive you. Feature number two is input channel renaming. So I've got this one named Music, but it's always gonna be Spotify. So I might as well just name this Spotify. But the thing is, if I now open up this where I can see all of my audio channels, it actually renames music, the official virtual channel, it renames it to Spotify. That's pretty cool. No more getting confused because it's named one thing here and another thing over there. However, this is not super exciting because I'm never gonna open that ever again. I can now do it all in here. So cool, but also kind of a moot point. Moot point? We're gonna go with moot point. Feature number three, if there's a channel you don't use, like I never use browser because I send my browsers right through the system channel. If I remove this, Guess what? Let's open back up the sound settings here. Browser disappears. It only shows you, oh, it says disabled. <laughs> it doesn't disappear. Maybe it disappears in here. You can see that browser has disappeared. It's not in here anymore as a list of your outputs. This is gonna keep your system a little more organized, a little bit cleaner. Of course, again, I'm never going in there anymore, so it doesn't change anything for me, but if you do, it's nice. Feature number four, automatic Stream Deck profiles. So let's say you've set this all up. This is exactly how you want it organized. You hit this new little button, send to Stream Deck here. We're gonna create a profile and look at this. Which one, uh, I've got two of them plugged in. So which one do you want to send it to? Uh, let's do the one on the right. And there it is. Hold on, let me grab a camera. Exactly the way it was set up inside Wavelink, it is now also set up, oh, there we go, on my Stream Deck. Look at that, I can even swipe left and right. Has all my channels in the exact same order. That is a nice little quality of life update that's gonna save a lot of people a lot of time. Let's jump into one of my new favorites, which for being real, should have been added a long time ago. I wonder if they were just waiting for this update. But over here, we've got a mic sound check. So I can record audio right here. Check, check, check. This is me recording my voice. You can see it recording this little sound wave right here. It's kind of a nice little graphic. And when I'm done, I can hit play. Hey, uh, Future Harris here. Uh, after that test for that last feature, for some reason my voice started fluctuating in volume up and down for the rest of the video. So I'm not sure if it was because of a plugin that I put on there or OBS had a glitch or something, but either way, sorry it's annoying. Uh, I'm aware of it and if you wanna yell at me in the comments anyway, 
that's engagement. Go for it. Now let's get back to it. Check, check, check. This is me recording my voice. You can see it recording this little sound wave right here. It's kind of a nice little graphic. And when I'm done, man, before that, just a month ago, I was helping someone set up their audio. I taught them to record their voice, play it back in OBS, send it through a different channel, add the EQ and mess around with it there, and then copy those settings to their voice. It was a, it was a nightmare. It's gone now though. We can do this. The reason I say it should have been there a long time ago is because this was added to the Beacon mic when that was first launched like three years ago. So, hallelujah, it's there. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. Next one is actually a really cool feature. So this is called one tap routing. Remember the beginning we had one click routing where I just add something here. Let's say you've opened up a game full screen. This is a new game, you've never opened it before, so you don't have it routed into the game channel. Well. There's a new button in the Stream Deck. We're gonna add an input button. And now there's something called add right here. And we're gonna adjust this to game. We're even gonna throw it right above our game channel here. What this is gonna do is anytime a new audio source is playing that's never been assigned to a channel, if I press that button, it'll throw it right in that channel that I set it above. Let me just demonstrate this for you. I'm gonna remove Edge out of this system here and I'm gonna create a button above system here. It doesn't have to be above system, that's just easy to remember. We're gonna make an add to system button here. And I'm gonna open, and let's, let's throw this in the corner so we can see it when it happens. We'll add the color just to make it easier to remember so it matches the color of the, uh, of the Wavelink channel here. I'm gonna open Edge. I've got this video tutorial, this Blender tutorial playing here by Blender Guru, fantastic thing if you ever wanna learn Blender. But you can see it's not coming through any of these because I've never thrown Edge into any channel. So on my button on my Stream Deck here, it will actually now say Microsoft Edge on the button. And if I press it, watch this. In that time, there it goes, millions of people right into the system. Like yourself. We all have that game that doesn't have great audio settings where you can't send it to the channel that you want. A lot of them just by default go through the system channel. Well now, with that one button, you can force it to go through whichever channel you want just by clicking the button on your Stream Deck. You don't even have to go into the software or into the Windows settings to change anything. Super nice quality of life update, I love that one. All right, two more features. One of them, half of you aren't gonna care about it all and half of you are gonna be stoked. If you've ever tried using Wavelink on the Mac, you know it's not a great experience. But now they work in tandem. There's feature parity between the two. The thing I'm showing you here on Windows is exactly how it works on the Mac. I'm super pumped about that. That's great. The last feature, I'm very excited to talk about. It's something Elgato has been working on for a while, and you may have noticed it earlier when I was doing the mic sound check down here. We got something up here called voice focus, and we're all familiar with that super viral clip of the guy doing NVIDIA broadcast, right? Where he was doing his, uh, what was that? The, the leaf blower and talking and having it cut it out. That was very impressive for the time but it required an NVIDIA GPU and it affected your voice quality negatively when you used it. Let me show you voice focus. I'm gonna turn on some noise, hold on. Leaf blower sound. Three, three hours of leaf blower, oh my gosh. All right, now this is an audio test. This is my voice going into a shotgun mic about two feet away. It'd probably be better if I had like a dynamic mic, but I don't have one right now. So let's see how this goes. Let's do this first with NVIDIA Broadcast. Now this is an audio test. This is my voice going into a shotgun mic about two feet away. It'd probably be better if I had like a dynamic mic, but I don't have one right now. So let's see how this goes. All right, now this is an audio test. This is my voice going into a shotgun mic about two feet away. It'd probably be better if I had like a dynamic mic, but I don't have one right now. Okay, so you could tell it, it raised my voice and it lowered the background, but it didn't remove it. It also, as I turned it up, it, it lowered the quality of my voice quite a bit. Let's hear it with voice focus. All right, so I've turned off NVIDIA broadcast. We're turning on voice focus and it's turned all the way down first. All right, now this is an audio test. This is my voice going into a shotgun mic about two feet away. It'd probably be better if I had like a dynamic mic, but I don't have one right now. So let's see how this goes. All right, now this is an audio test. This is my voice going when I turn it up to 100, it completely removes the sound behind me. It does affect my voice a little bit, but if I turn it down a little bit, we found a sweet spot going into a shotgun mic about two feet away. It'd probably be better if I had like a dynamic mic, but I don't have one right now. That's pretty good. And that's not even with an isolating microphone like a Shure SM7B or a Pod mic or a Wave DX. That is, that's with a shotgun mic that picks up the entire room. It's crazy how much better that is. Again, here it is with NVIDIA Broadcast. All right, now this is an audio test. This is my voice going into a shotgun mic about two feet away. 
at 100%. And here it is with voice focus at about 90%. It'd probably be better if I had like a dynamic mic, but I don't have one right now. That's really cool. Plus, you don't have to have an NVIDIA GPU to do that. You can do that with any PC hardware. You do, however, have to have Elgato hardware, like Elgato audio hardware, either a Wave mic, a Wave XLR, or the Wave XLR dock for the Stream Deck Plus. That's why I didn't use my Beacon mic, even though it's coming through the Wavelink software. It has to be an Elgato audio hardware product. But what do you think? What do you think of version 2.0? Is my order the right order, or did something earlier in the list intrigue you the most? Let me know in the comments down below. If you don't have an opinion, just drop your favorite or a random emoji for engagement. Hit the like button, subscribe while you're down there. And as always, happy streaming.